The Chinese have just made a major new discovery on the surface of the moon thanks to their Chang'e 5 sample return mission. Chinese scientists have confirmed the discovery of a new mineral in the lunar regolith, a transparent crystal that they have named Chang'e-site. This makes China only the third nation behind the United States and Russia to discover a new rock type on the moon. Chang'e-site is now the sixth unique mineral that is known to exist on the moon, but has not yet been found on Earth. This is a pretty big deal, not only because we have a brand new space rock, but more so because this is just one of the things that China has found in their new collection of moon soil that they acquired in 2020 with a successful return mission from the Chang'e 5 robotic lander. The Chinese have also found an amount of helium-3 in the same regolith that contained the Chang'e site. This isotope of the element helium is being eyed as a potential fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors. And the Chinese claim that not only do they now know the concentration of helium-3 in moon dust, but they are also the first to have figured out the extraction method required to harvest this isotope from the return samples. On the one hand, it's awesome that new things are being discovered on the moon. That's great for science. On the other hand, it's not ideal that the Chinese are the ones doing the discovery and not NASA or at least some other space agency that is a little bit more transparent. If this is what has been announced publicly, then we're definitely left wondering what they aren't telling us about. So let's talk about what might be going on here. This is the space race. So this particular discovery of the Chang'e site came from a small collection of lunar regolith, about 61 ounces of the dust and rocks from the surface of the moon gathered by the Chang'e 5 rover and sent back to the Earth in 2020. The rover landed on a region of the moon called Oceanus Procellarum, which means the Ocean of Storms. This is a long, dark splotch on the moon that we can see on the northwestern corner of the visible side. This specific sample was collected near Mons Rumker, which is a previously volcanic area where the rock and soil is thought to be just 1.2 billion years old. Chang'e 5 used a combination of a mechanical scoop and a drill that could burrow 2 meters underground. NASA's own sample return mission back in the 1970s found regolith that was much older at between 3.1 and 4.4 billion years old. None of the Apollo crew landings were anywhere near where the Chang'e 5 sample collection was done. What China found in that sample was a single particle of colorless, transparent crystal, kind of like a diamond. The Chang'e site is only 10 microns across. It's a microscopic little speck of matter classified as a phosphate mineral and columnar crystal. The discovery has been certified by the International Mineralogical Association as a new mineral, one of six that have been discovered in lunar samples. Now don't get me wrong, the moon crystal is very cool and all, but the most important thing that China has found so far in their lunar sample is actually helium-3. This is not anything new. We've known about it for a long time. It does exist on Earth in very small amounts, but we're pretty sure that it is abundant on the moon. It's created by solar wind and cosmic radiation impacting the unprotected lunar surface. The moon has no magnetic shield to bounce off the radiation like the Earth does. The helium-3 is special because it has two protons and one neutron. It's unique as the only known stable isotope of any element that has more protons than neutrons. In theory, a nuclear fusion reaction of deuterium and helium-3 would generate 164.3 megawatt hours of energy per gram of helium-3. It's a little hard to get a sense of scale for what that means. So the Hoover Dam outputs 11,000 megawatt hours of energy per day. So according to my feeble math skills, that would mean just 67 grams of helium-3 would match the daily output of a gigantic hydroelectric dam, which is obviously pretty crazy. In addition to that, 
neither the helium-3 or its reaction products are radioactive. So they wouldn't turn the reactor components into radioactive nuclear waste that we then have to deal with. On Earth, the best way to find helium-3 is as a byproduct of the decaying tritium isotopes in our existing stockpiles of nuclear warheads. That's where it's collected today, and we get about 15 kilograms or 33 pounds per year. So because of that limited supply, helium-3 is very expensive, reaching over 17,500 US dollars for just one gram. It's commonly used right now in small-scale nuclear fusion experiments, in medical imaging technology, and it's also used in neutron radiation detectors that scan for nuclear materials at U.S. border crossings. The moon surface is believed to contain as much as 1.5 million metric tons of helium-3. That represents around one and a half quadrillion dollars worth of resources. To support nuclear fusion power on a global scale, we would just need about 100 tons of helium-3. So China has a massive head start in figuring out where the helium-3 is located. They also have the Chang'e 4 mission that is on the far side of the moon looking for helium-3 deposits, and they are claiming to already have a method for extracting the necessary isotopes from the lunar soil. Of course, it still won't be easy to get enough of the helium-3 to really make a significant difference on Earth. The highest estimated concentrations of helium-3 in lunar soil are around 50 parts per billion. China says that they have calculations for the actual concentration based on what they found in their samples, but big surprise, they won't release those numbers. So based on what we estimate, you'd likely need to process 150 tons of regolith to harvest a single gram of helium-3. That is a lot of space mining, and then you'd need to get it back to Earth, which is also problematic. Also, just wanted to let you know about our Discord server. We've got over 1,500 members and host regular live watch parties within the community. We have some big events coming up for the first Starship launch, Artemis launch, and Tesla AI day, so if you aren't already, join our Discord server using the link in the description. None of that is going to happen anytime soon, but it's not impossible either. China is deep into engine testing for their Long March 9 rocket, a super heavy lift vehicle that would rival the SpaceX Starship in terms of mass to orbit and interplanetary travel. Current plans for the Long March 9 to have a maximum payload capacity of 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, 50 tons to the Moon, and 44 tons to Mars. The rocket's first flight is expected to occur by 2028 or 2029, and the expectation is that it will be used for Chinese crewed lunar missions sometime during the 2030s. So, it's not like China wouldn't have the capability to establish a mining operation on the moon. And they've already got the roadmap in play to get there. After the Chang'e site and Helium-3 announcements, the China National Space Administration announced full state approval for the next three Phase 4 lunar missions. Those will be Chang'e 6, 7, and 8. They are expected to begin launching as early as 2024. Chang'e 6 will further explore the far side of the moon and will be the first mission to ever bring back samples from over there. Chang'e 7 will explore the moon's south pole region in search of water ice for future human colonies. Chang'e 8 will send robotic technology to the lunar surface that will begin the construction of a basic structure for their International Lunar Research Station, a planned moon base in partnership with the Russian space program. This is all scheduled to happen over the next 10 years. According to a statement from the director of China's Lunar Explorations Program, quote, the purpose of our mission is to lay the foundation for building a lunar station, so there are a lot of technologies to be tackled, and we need to explore the energy of the moon. Great challenges lay ahead of us. However, with our previous experience and an excellent team, I believe we will succeed, end quote. And on the other hand, we have NASA's Artemis program, their own mission to establish a human presence on the moon. Artemis is supposed to put human beings back on the surface of the moon in 2024 or 2025 or 
maybe 2026. I don't know. Hopefully before 2028, at least, but things aren't going so well. And maybe the SLS rocket will get back on track and everything will be great, but maybe it won't. And if it doesn't, then that basically gives China free reign on the moon for the foreseeable future, unless someone else were to step in. We know that SpaceX is sending their Starship rocket to the moon. It's planned to become a reusable human lander for the Artemis mission anyway, so if NASA can't get their SLS and Orion system to work, then there's really no reason to think that the Starship can't just handle the entire job on its own. I think the only reason that Elon isn't talking more about this is that he doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings at NASA. So, obviously we don't know how this is going to play out. It's very easy to have ambitious dreams for space exploration and mining the moon and creating nuclear fusion and all that fun stuff. But it will be preposterously difficult to actually make all of this happen. So, is there really anything to be concerned about? Maybe. Just the fact alone that China is out there making new discoveries about the moon while NASA is still at home playing with the same rocks that they collected 50 years ago is not a good look for the Western world. We kind of built our empire on exceptionalism, and if we start getting overshadowed by competing nations, then the knives may start to come out. Anyway, what do you think is going to happen? Does China take over the moon and dominate energy, or will they just share with the rest of us and everything will be fine? Let us know in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.